Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner and this is stage two of Perry Nice 2021. Another pretty boring stage when it comes to watching three or four hours worth of bike racing. Again though, let me stress, it is not boring for the riders back there. They are fighting for every inch of real estate on the, from one side of the curb to the other side of the curb. There is no room for taking your hands off the brake levers and eating and drinking throughout this stage. At any moment, there could be a crash anywhere in the field. They can start at the front, the middle, or even the back. And it would be George Bennett. He is the next big GC rider to take the hit today with 32K to go. They go into a small, narrow street right through the towns. You have the very little sidewalk, poles on each side neighbors houses that are just straight up building there there's no place to escape george bennett crashes hard clearly has some problems getting back on the bike he does he does return back to the field for the finish but they left a big gap of cars for george bennett to close and this is my real problem when it comes to bike racing if you're gonna make a rider that crash, ha take the time to have someone look after him. And I know they didn't really get the medical there right when he's crashed, but clearly his team, whoever's dropping off the helmet that's switching equipment with him, they're still taking some time to look him over to be sure whether or not if he can get back on the bike. And here's the problem with concussions, folks. It could affect you right there at that moment, or it can affect you two, three, four, five hours later. You never know when that's going to happen. So my belief, when you come up to a rider, you look him in the eye, it looks clear. He's saying the right things to you. Put him on his bike, let him go. But someone has to keep an eye on him. But if you're going to take that time to look at a rider, you got to allow him to get back to the to the field again. Either put a car in front of them or let them hold on. I don't care how you do it. But at that moment, there is no advantage to having a crash and then holding onto the car to get back to the group. Assuming you're not going up a category one climb or it's the last 10K of the race, the obvious things like that. But on today's stage, when I saw George Bennett off the back and they got the barrage there and his cars behind him and they're making him close that whole gap to the front group of 150 plus riders. I mean, come on, just get the rider back to the group. This is a professional bike racing. Make sure he's okay. Take that time to make sure he's okay, but then get him back onto the group. I mean, that's the least you can do. If you want riders to not panic after they crash and just grab their bike and jump back on, you got to leave them the ability to know that they don't have to worry about getting back onto the group again. Again, I'm not asking you to get them to the front, but you got to allow a rider to get to the at least back to the peloton. There's no advantage back there to crashing and hitting a pole and then holding on to the car to get back to the peloton. Keep an eye on the rider. Let's take our time. Let's get him back to the back of the peloton. Now, the real excitement, you see some time bonuses and you're up there. Tego Gagenhart, he's got... He won the Giro last year. That little guy thinks that he's going to sprint with these sprinters and steal some time bonuses. Tell you, that's, that's not going to happen, man. You might as well just save the legs for three stages later when you got to go up some big climb or something. Sprinting with, with Michael Matthews and the sprinters out there, you're just never going to win that. But those points, <clears throat> those time bit points there for Michael Matthews are going to be great because he's going to take the yellow's jersey at the end of today's stage. But now let's talk about 1.2 to gate. 1.2k to go that's really when it gets exciting dsm get on the front and they're doing a great job they got four or five of their team up there leading it out and they have a dangerous turn coming at 1.1k to go left turn causes a big crash and blocks up the road now in the video if you looked really really close you got to hit pause and go back i watched this 10 times so i caught it but i didn't catch it on on the first time when they're coming into the sprint after one after the crash, I just couldn't understand what happened to Sam Bennett and why he couldn't accelerate from where he was. Even with a Dakunic quick step teammate with him, they couldn't get him up to the front. If you go back and look at the crash, you can see the two Dakunic quick step riders, Sam Bennett, I'm taking a guess here that the other one's Michael Morkoff, got held up by the crash. They weren't involved in the center and they didn't go down, but clearly they got held up. They would have had to have been sprinting for those 200 meters when the camera wasn't on them 
I'm guessing that they're sprinting, closing that gap there. They get back on, but now they're going to be kind of redlined after that big effort. And that's really what's going to wreck Sam Bennett. It's going to cost them the yellow jersey and going to cost them a chance at the stage win. And of course, you're going to lose points when it comes to the sprint competition too. So that 1.1K crash right there was big. And that really, the whole reason that Sam Bennett's caught up in that crash is because his Dakuna quick step guys should have already been on the front like DSM were and leading them through that dangerous turn. So their first mistake was not to be on the front. Second mistake was they're too far back and then caught in the crash. Third, now they got to bridge that gap to come back with 900, 850 meters to go. That's a huge effort. I'm taking a guess on that part, but I believe it had to happen. I don't see any other reason for it. Then before the hard right hand turn, we're talking about 600 meters, 650 meters ago, it's Mad Peterson and Brian Kokar going at it again. They're bumping shoulders hard on the left side of the road. Jasper Stevens is doing a great, amazing lead out to bring Mads Peterson into the final right hand turn there with about 500, 550 meters to go. Now DSM had the front and they did a great job. Almost number one lead out, but Jasper Stevens, I'm giving you number one lead out for today's race for sure because you made it into that turn with your sprinter on your wheel and he did at least, let's call it four or 500 meters on the front. It was impressive what Jasper Stevens did. He really, when he's sprinting the whole way af after the turn, he's going hard at 200 meters. You see him start to look back at 150. He really looks back and what he's thinking is, Come on, Mads, you got to go. I just did four or 500 meters for you on the front. I'm done, you gotta go. Mads Pedersen clearly doesn't have the legs with 150 meters to go. It is absolutely Case Bowles back there, accelerating to the left, and he jumps hard and just flies past Brian Cocard. He was fourth wheel, flying past Brian Cocard and flying past the world champion, ex-world champion of uh, Mads Pedersen and just making it look easy all the way to the line. Sam Bennett does an amazing job to salvage his position and get up there and gain some points, but he's gonna lose the yellow jersey. Michael Matthews is in there on the sprint to get some more points on that particular competition and taking the yellow jersey. Guys, it was a great two lead outs from Team DSM, they were really fantastic. If you go back to that final right-hand turn, when they get overtaken from the Trek Sega Freighter rider, Jasper Stevens, as Case Bowles is coming up the right side, he's coming up inside and it's tight. His teammate looks over and sees it's him and moves over just a tad to give Case Bowles enough gap there to make the inside. He moves over, allows Case Bulls to slide on to Brian Cocard's wheel. Now he's on the wheel with 500 meters to go. You can take a little bit of a breather, and then you got to punch it to the line at 150 meters, and he brings home the win. It was a great sprint stage, one that you can go back and look at and see what the sprinters are doing, what the leadout guys are doing for them. To Kunit Quick Step, they should have had the lead to begin with. But still, Michael Morkoff was there to close that gap, I'm sure, for Sam Bennett, which helped him save at least something on the stage. Jasper Stevens, you were, man, you were awesome. Good job. Congratulations from the Butterfly Effect. Hope you guys like today's breakdown of the stage. I'll see you on stage three of Perry Nice.